Bloom's Taxonomy, the revised version. Bloom's Taxonomy is a hierarchical framework related to cognitive skills, developed by Benjamin Bloom in 1956 and updated in 2001 by a party of psychologists. The framework reflects the level of cognitive skill an individual may have in relation to comprehending specific knowledge and skills. The framework is sequential, with the more basic levels of comprehension at the bottom, building up gradually to higher order cognitive processes at the top. So what we're going to do here is look at the different six stages of cognitive ability in relation to Bloom's taxonomy. So we're going to start off at the bottom where the most basic levels are, and that is that of remembering. Now, remembering is being able to recognize and recall knowledge. So it could be me just saying to you, one plus one equals two, and that you just remember that the answer to that equation is two. And that's kind of how mathematics starts out. Okay, you've just got to remember answers in the way they are. You don't necessarily know how the addition formula works, but you just know that one plus one equals two. The next level upon this then is that of understanding. And then this is going into that bit more depth. So I say to you, one plus one equals two. So you put up your left hand, you hold up one finger, you put up your right hand, put up one finger, you see one on the left, you see one on the right, you count in your head, one and one, that equals two. You understand how one plus one now equals two. All right, so you're understanding the rules and facts related to the knowledge, okay? And you're knowing why the knowledge is the way it is. So that's understanding. At the next level, we have that of applying. And this means applying that skill now in other areas. So I know one plus one equals two. What is two plus two? What is two plus three? Okay, because I have an understanding now of addition, I can now apply it to different situations and obviously do larger and more complex numbers. So I'm being able to use the knowledge in different contexts, implementing it in different situations. So that application there. The fourth level is that of analyzing. And here we're actually using it in more real world situations now. We are able to extract information from or use the knowledge in real world scenarios in order to support research or calculations. So now I'm not just dealing with numbers in this situation, I might actually have a scenario presented with me and there could be a basic scenario such as I go to school and I've got three apples, I give two of my apples to friends at school, how many apples am I left with? All right, I've got to extract how many apples they are, I've got to understand there's a subtraction involved there and then how many apples I'm left with. So we're actually looking into real world scenarios, day to day scenarios, and using my already existing knowledge to complete that calculation there, even though the facts aren't necessarily given to me in a straight format. Next level is that of using evaluation. And with evaluation, we're now being critical. I've built up a level of knowledge now that I don't just know how to do these tasks, but I could be critical in how to go about doing these tasks. So using knowledge to critically analyze a system or design, the foundation of the knowledge acts as the basis to justify or be critical of an idea or design. So as the name suggests, doing an evaluation of my own work and saying what went good, what went bad and what could be improved, as well as other people's works. And based on that, being able to justify why my method is correct and better than other ideas or looking at other ideas and being critical of them and saying how they could be done in another way that would make them work even better. So obviously we need quite a high level of knowledge in this situation because we're not just thinking that there's only one solution to a problem, but understanding that there are many ways of completing a problem. What is the best avenue to go if we're going to be most successful in satisfying whatever an issue may be and being able to justify that with my existing knowledge. So obviously requiring a deeper understanding there. And then the final level is that of creating. We are now using my knowledge to plan and develop something new. All right, I'm using my knowledge and I'm, as said in previous steps, applying to the real world, but actually now building something in the real world. I'm creating an artwork. I'm creating a multi-story building. I'm developing a program. I'm building a cabinet. Okay, all my skills are now being combined together to actually create something using my knowledge and developing something that's brand new. And that is perceived as the highest level of cognitive ability when I can use my knowledge base to develop something. And so they are the six steps. And just reiterating that as we move up the actual taxonomy, we're using higher order cognitive ability. Okay, and look, 
obviously we've got different cognitive ability in different areas and subjects uh, within the world in relation to mathematics, understanding of language, uh, in art, in technology, in geography, all of them we have different levels of cognitive ability and where our strengths are is where we are higher up on Bloom's taxonomy. So the things I can create in, I'm using higher level cognitive ability, those things that I can evaluate and justify and have firm opinions on based on my knowledge and understanding. That's where I have greater strengths in cognitive ability. And that's something we need to understand. We all have strengths and weaknesses in different areas. For those of you who are doing HSC studies as well, you might see these words as very well reflected of types of HSC questions you get asked. And usually those band six style questions and questions uh, that are awarded higher marks in the exam, use those actual word, uh, key words and verbs such as analyzing and evaluating and in the case of diagrams creating okay and in order to reflect ideas okay so that's how you know you're getting to your higher level of cognitive ability but obviously when you start out your study you pretty much are just starting by remembering key words and terms that you've learned in the course and then trying to develop an understanding of them so the actual Bloom's taxonomy is a good way to go out about approaching your studies as well when in high school and preparing for exam. And knowing that when you're doing those higher order cognitive abilities towards the top, you are getting a deeper understanding and that should uh, help you reaffirm your confidence in a specific subject area when preparing for an exam. So I hope this has helped you understand a Bloom's taxonomy and how beneficial it is to developing a knowledge of how your brain works in relation to different subjects and just really how different skills emulate the cognitive ability in your mind.